you still remember the difference between happiness and joy? So we said that happiness is most of the time depends on the events on the events of our lives. Kapag masaya yung nangyayari, we are happy, right? Kapag may sweldo na, kami nga nagsweldo yung iba sa amin ng 28, whoo, we are rejoicing. Mga rare events, so ang happy. So happiness depends on the events. Kapag kayo ay nagka-boyfriend or nagka-girlfriend, ang happy-happy ng pakiramdam, di ba? So ang happiness po is an outward expression. Yung outward expression ng ating nararamdaman because of the events. However, joy is an inner feeling. So we will talk about joy today. May mga tao, they love the word joy. May mga tao naman, pag narinig yung joy, naiinis sila. So joy endures hardship and trials and connects with meaning and purpose. Joy is having that innermost peace even in the midst of problems and trials. Joy, mga kapatid, is a result of faith. God's gracious victories in the past, seeing God's works and trusting Him, and joy appears as the characteristic mark of distinction of a Christian or believer. Because not everyone has joy. Malalaman po natin kung sino-sino ang may joy. It is the spontaneous result of being filled with the Holy Spirit and is among the main fruits of the Holy Spirit. Sa mga nagbebeta po dyan, Galatians 5:22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So joy is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for a while. Lord, You are a good God. You are God, and we are not. Lord, we, be, we believe that you prepared a wonderful message for all of us today. Allow us to grasp, Lord, the beauty of your words and the strength that it can give us. Allow our faith to be strengthened as we obey and as we listen to your words, O God. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We open our hearts to your words today, O Lord God. Change us, rebuke us, O oh God. And Lord, your words be manifested in our lives. Anoint me, Lord. I decrease myself so you may increase. Deliver your message, Lord, through your servant. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to tell you this short story, uh, which, probably will which probably some of you have heard already. And this is about a king and a friend servant. So this king po is an African king. So he has a friend na ang kanya pong friend ay kanya ding servant. I want to tell you this story because this story ma might set us up well in our topic. So long time ago, there was an African king, okay, and he had a friend who is also his servant. So this servant of this king is annoyingly positive. Nakakaano yung kanyang pagiging positive. Do you remember yung kwento natin last time o yung pinag-usapan natin last time? Yung optimistic and positive uh, and pessimistic? So this servant of the African king is annoyingly optimistic and positive. Very positive siya. Sa lahat ng event, this is good. Something terrible happened, this is good. Something good happened, this is good. So lahat ng nangyayari, this is good. Annoyingly positive. So, regardless of the event, ang sagot po niya is, this is good. So, one day, the king and the friend of the king, who is the servant, pumunta po sila sa jungle para po mag, uh, ang tawag dito? Mag-hunting niya, mga so. So, pumunta po sila doon. Now, ang ginawa po nung king, na, may nakita siya na gusto niyang target, kinuha niya yung barrel from his servant and ipinoint niya doon sa Uh, gusto niyang barilin. But what happened uh, was, nag-misfunction yung kanyang barrel. So, ang nangyari, ang kanyang uh, barrel, naputukan yung kanyang thumb. So, naputol yung kanyang daliri, yung kanyang thumb. Nabawasan ng isa yung kanyang mga daliri. So, galit na galit itong hari doon sa servant. 
Tumingin siya sa kanyang servant. Ang sabi niya, what in the world? Sabi po nung kanyang servant ay, this is good. Galit na galit yung king. What? This is good. Nawala na nga yung thumb ko. This is good pa. So sa galit po nung king, dinala niya sa tower ng palasyo yung kanyang servant at ikinulong niya doon. Galit na galit siya. So after one year, the king decided to go hunting again. So in the jungle, mayroon po siyang, uh, nakita po siya ng mga cannibals. So kinuha siya ng mga cannibals. Nung iluluto na siya ng mga cannibals, nakita nila na kulang yung kanyang daliri. So itong mga cannibals na ito is superstitious. Marami silang pamahiin. Sabi nila, wag natin tong iluto, wag natin tong kainin. Kasi bawal ito sa atin. So ang nangyari po, pinawalan siya ng mga cannibals. Umuwi siyang muli doon sa kanyang bahay at excited siya. Sa kanyang excitement, pinuntahan niya yung kanyang servant at nag-sorry siya. Sabi niya, forgive me, I locked you up for one year. Sabi po ng kanyang servant, this is good. What's wrong with you? I locked you up for one year and you're saying this is good? Sabi po ng kanyang servant, if I am not locked here for one year, I had been with you in the jungle. Siya yung makakain. <laughs> so all things work together for good. So why did we start with this story? This story reminds us of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Today we will focus po mga kapatid on the writing of James. Kilala natin si James. Si James. Sino po si James? So James was a brother of Jesus. Marami pong James sa Bible. But the guy or the James who wrote the book of James is not The James, na kapatid po ni uh, na kapatid ni John, disciple. Uh, si James po na sumulat ng Book of James or Santiago sa Tagalog. Ang sumulat nito ay si James, na kapatid po ni Jesus sa kanyang uh, fa- father kay Joseph. Hindi po niya biological father si Joseph. We know for a fact that, and this is true mga kapatid, kailangan itanim natin to sa ating puso at sa ating isip that Jesus was born of a virgin birth. But after His birth, of course, nagkaroon po pa ng ibang anak, si Jesus at si Mary. And uh, jo- <laughs> si Joseph and si Mary. Sorry po. Matthew, Mark, and Paul tells us that James was the brother of Jesus, the writer of the book of James. And si Matthew po, ganito yung pagkasulat niya. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. Coming to his hometown, Jesus began teaching the people and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and his miraculous powers, they ask? Isn't this the carpenter's son? And isn't this Mary's mother's name, Mary? And aren't these brothers James, Simon, Joseph, and Judas? Different Judas, by the way, mga kapatid. Hindi po si Judas Iscariot. So may kapatid din po si Jesus na ang pangalan ay Judas. So there are also multiple, J- multiple of James in the New Testament, but most of the evident points to this writer, to this James as the writer as of the book of James. And what's interesting about James, mga kapatid, that we learn from the book of John is that James did not believe Jesus. Whoa. Hindi po naniwala si James kay Jesus. James wasn't a Christian until the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. During the time of Jesus' ministry, James did not believe Jesus who he said he was because Jesus was saying that he is the Messiah and James and the rest of his siblings did not believe him. So may nasulat po sa John chapter 7 verses 3 to 5. Sabi po doon, his brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here, sa Tagalog ko po siya babasahin. Kaya't sinabi kay Yesus ng kanyang mga kapatid, Bakit hindi ka umalis dito at pumunta sa Judea para makita ng iyong mga tagasunod ang ginagawa mo? Walang taong naglilihim ng kanyang ginagawa kung ang hangad niya ay maging tanyag. So sinasabi po, 
ni J, ng kanyang mga kapatid kay Jesus, kasi po sa verse 5 ang sabi doon, maging ang mga kapatid ni Jesus ay hindi naniwala sa kanya. So ang sinasabi nila kay Jesus, gusto mo namang maging tanyag, bakit hindi ka lumabas, magpakita ka sa mundo upang makilala ka nila. Now, they were not telling Jesus to reveal himself through signs and wonders for the benefit of the world. Hindi po yun yung purpose nila. Kaya po nila ito sinasabi kay Jesus because they needed for themselves to see the miracles and wonders for them to believe. But what they failed to understand is this. Jesus at no point was ever interested in establishing his fame as a leader. Si Jesus po never, never, makikita po natin sa gospel that he is interested to be popular or maging sikat na leader. Kaya nga po, although he is the king of kings, the lord of lords, he came down to, to, he came down to earth from heaven na isang tao katulad natin at ipinanganak siya sa isang sabsaban. So at nowhere po na nasusulat na ang Panginoong Yesus gusto niyang sumikat. What he was interested in is for us all to have freedom and receive eternal life. And you know what mga kapatid, this is something that James would realize and that's why we now have today the book of James. Ito po yung narealize ni James after the resurrection time, kaya mayroon po tayong book of James na tinatawag 108 verses more than uh, five chapters and 54 exactly half of the book of James is mostly imperative or commands tingnan po natin James is a pretty direct guy very direct po yung message na mga sinulat ni James sa book of James and his goal was to write a letter that would help disperse or displaces Christians live into the freedom that Jesus died to bring them. He wants them to realize that kahit ano pa ang pinagdadaanan nila, it's all worth it. Ang sulat po ni James ay sulat para po sa mga Jewish Christians. Kung mapapansin po nyo, si Apostol Pablo, ang kanyang mga letters ay para sa mga Gentiles na katulad natin. Romans, Philippians, Ephesians, ano pa po, Galatians. His letters are mostly for Gentiles like us. But James, his letter is for Jewish Christians who were under heavy persecution from Rome at that time. Kung makikita po niyo yung larawan, hindi po yan enough para ilarawan yung nararanasan ng mga Christians during that time as a persecution, sila po ginagawang ilaw sa mga poste, sinusunog sila. At yung iba, pinapakain sa leon. So napakatindi po ng kanilang pinagdadaanan kung kaya po si James or si Santiago ay sumulat sa kanila, encouraging them. These Christians, they weren't, weren't they were, where they wanted to be. Hindi, wala po sila sa kalagayan na gusto nila. Tayo, we are so blessed. Nakaupo tayo dito. Mamaya kakain tayo, magkakape, naka-aircon, may electric fan pang support, naka-carpet tayo. We are so blessed. Nakikita po ba natin yung blessing na yon? But for them, during that time, they were extremely persecuted. Kung iniisip ko nga po kung tayo ang makakaranas nito, baka wala nang Christian ngayon. God knows the perfect timing. So Peter, uh, sorry Peter, James wrote this book to encourage the Christian Jewish. So tingnan po natin paano nagsimula ang sula ni James or ni Santiago sa book of James chapter 1 verse 1. Basahin ko po hanggang verse 4. Ang sabi po doon, James, pinakilala po niya yung kanyang sarili, a servant of God and the Lord Je and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Ito po yung Jewish Christians na sinasabi niya na dispersed among the nations or around the world. 
Greetings, pagbati, sabi po niya. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Ang ibang translation po nagsasabi, count it all joy. Bilangin nyo na kagalakan. Wow! Bilangin daw po natin kagalakan whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the test, testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Joy in the midst of trials. Trials are something that we all experience. Nakaranas na po kayo ng trials or pagsubok? Meron pong hindi pa nakaranas? Wala pa, na, wala pa naman? I think so. Whether we like it or not, mga kapatid, we've all experienced them and we are all somehow experiencing them in different forms. In fact, at this very moment, ang ilan sa atin dumaranas ng matinding pagsubok sa inyo o sa ating mga, mga, mga buhay. Some of them are related to relationship. Maybe you're facing a trial that has to do with work or visa or finances or friendship, or love, or health. Alam nyo po, from beginning of last year, 2020, we are already experiencing severe trials. One of them is COVID. Dito test yung patience natin. Dito test ang faith natin. Dito marami tayong pinagdaanan. We experience different kinds of trials. We also experience different kinds of devastations and pains. Some of us lost jobs. Some of us love, lost our loved ones. Namatay po ang tatay ko last year, maging si Sislen, and we were not able to go home. How difficult it is. Napakahira po. But James chapter 1, verses 2 to, two, 2 to 3 says, Consider it pure joy. Brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, how could James possibly tell us to consider trials pure joy? Wow. I believe it was something, it was because of something that he learned from his brother, Jesus Christ, life and death. He witnessed the death of Jesus, for sure, and his resu resurrection, and he realized that Jesus truly is the Messiah. This strengthened his faith. According to, the stu according to study, mga kapatid, James died as a martyr. He was even thrown from the pinnacle of the temple and was beaten to death with a bat. Pinatay po siya sa pagpalo, inihulog na siya mula sa tuktok ng, ng templo, tapos bi, bi, ano yun, binayo-bayo pa siya hanggang siya ay mamatay. And this proves in the life of James that even death could not separate him from the love of God. Mga kapatid, choose joy in the midst of trials. But why choose joy in the midst of trials? Number one po, we will be talking about three points. I'll, I'll try to make it faster. Number one point po, trials are inevitable. Pag sinabi pong inevitable, hindi natin pwedeng iwasan. It's a must. May experience nating lahat. Kaya nga po, ang sabi ni James, consider it pure joy when. Hindi po niya sinabing if. Kasi pag if, may possibility na hindi, di ba? If. Pero when, ang sinabi po ni James. Why? Because all of us will experience trials and it is just a matter of time. May kanya-kanya tayong panahon. May kanya-kanya tayong oras. Maaring ilan sa inyo dumaan na sa matinding pagsubok at napagtagumpayan nyo na. Maaring ilan sa atin kasalukuyang dumaraan sa pagsubok at kinakailangan pa natin ng matinding pananampalataya para maging sa gitna ng ating pagsubok, masabi natin, tayo ay may joy. Mga kapatid, Isipin po natin lahat ng bagay pansamantala lamang. 
Lahat ng pagsubok may katapusan. But how we respond in the midst of trials is what matters most. Kaya nga po, kung wala tayong pagsubok, kung tahimik lang ang alon, i-enjoy natin. Huwag tayong kill joy. Yung wala naman tayong pinagsubok na pagsubok na dinadaanan tapos nakasimangot tayo. Binati kayo ng good morning, good afternoon. Ang sagot nyo, paano maganda sa umaga? Kung wala po tayong pinagdadaanan mga kapatid, let us enjoy. Kasi darating ang panahon, hindi tayo excuse, dadaan tayo sa pagsubok. And kung dumaan po tayo sa pagsubok, lagi ko po itong sinasabi, daan lang, huwag tambayan. Mga kapatid, huwag natin pasanin ang mundo kung hindi naman dapat. And even if dumaadaan tayo sa pagsubok, huwag nating pasanin, nandyan si Lord, tutulungan niya tayo. Mga kapatid, we can choose joy even in the midst of trials. Remember this, God is sovereign over all the various trials. When we know that suffering is part of God's plan, we will be better prepared to trust His sovereignty and goodness. We are reminded that God knows that we are going to suffer, but He also knows that our suffering has a purpose. And number two point po, trials have purpose. Number one kanina, sabi natin, trials are inevitable. Number two, trials have purpose. Sabi po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 7, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also re received, that Christ died for our sins. For what, mga kapatid? For our sins. The death of the Lord Jesus Christ has purpose. He died for our sins. Kung kaya, lagi po natin itong papahalagan. I will continue. According to the scriptures and verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve, after that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep, after that he was seen by James, ito po yung, kanyang tin, sum, yung brother na sumulat po ng book of James, then by all the apostles. So simula po ng resurrection ng Panginoong Yesus, dito nagbago ang pananaw ni James. He accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Messiah and the only Savior. Mga kapatid, our Savior is a victorious God. He has overcome death. We should also be confident that we will overcome Lahat mapagtatagumpayan natin kung kasama natin siya. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, you are an overcomer. Mga kapatid, walang kristyanong lulugulugo or matamlay. Tingnan nyo nga kung lulugulugo yung katabi nyo. Ang trials, mga kapatid, dadaan. Sinabi ko kanina, wag nating tambayan. Just say Hi. And goodbye. Tingnan po natin kung paano ang trials ay may, pur may purpose. First point is, the fairness of trials reveals our approval before God. Yung fairness po is like an oven. May picture po dyan si Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if we remember the story. What a beautiful picture of Jesus being with them. Mayroon po diyang picture, pakipakita po, so that we can visualize how God is with us whenever we are in the midst of trials. Sa ating pong binasa, in verse 2, James refers to our suffering as a trial. In verse 3, he calls it testing. The word in verse 3, which is testing, is one of that refers to the act of, approving the worth of something. Kapag may test, di po ba may susunod na level? So meaning to say, the next level is worth of something. In job interviews, we face exams or in, uh, in, in tests. 
Ang anak po namin, she's currently applying sa job. I think ito na yung pang lima niyang interview today. Sabi ko, thank God, wala ako sa Pilipinas. Baka hindi ko maipasa, napakaraming interview. Nung panahon naman namin, tatlo lang yata. Bakit ngayon, walo na yata ang interview? So, ganun pa man po, whenever we pass any test, pataas ng pataas ng level. Kapag mayroon po kayo, ngayon hindi na po ito nangyayari, I'm not sure. Sa Pilipinas po, nung araw, sa probinsya la luna, kapag may manliligaw, ipapakilala, kapag gusto ng babae yung manliligaw sa kanya, syempre magpapaalam, pwede pa kitang ligawan? Pwede naman. Pakilala kita sa magulang ko ha. Tingnan ko kung papasa ka. So pag pinakilala po ang manliligaw sa magulang, kikilatisin ng magulang, ang titingnan nila kung papasa. Nag-toothbrush ba? Mm, check. Maganda ba yung buhok? Mm, check. Malinis ang kuko sa paa. Check. Pagigibin nga yan, tingnan natin kung may muscles. May ab. So, tinetest po, kinikilatis. Tingnan po natin ang sagot ni Google. I asked Google if what can he say about trials. And this is what he said. Sabi po ni Google, trials are the bumps and roadblocks in our in our otherwise smooth life journey. Back road. When these difficult times come, more often than not, our automatic response is to seek instant relief and immediate escape. We clench our teeth, ginigrin or binabite po natin ng ating teeth, shut our eyes tight, and hope for the pain to end the next day. Have you ever experienced that? This is very true. When I was new in my faith and I was tested, mga kapatid, I came to a point na yung dahil sa sobrang pain na nararamdaman ko, yung gumugulong ako sa carpet ng kwarto, sa sobrang sakit at kakaiyak, and thinking, Lord, if I will sleep tonight, wag mo na akong gisingin bukas. Because of the deep pain, extreme pain, kapag dumadaan po tayo sa matinding pagsubok, ayaw na nating gumising kinabukasan. But praise God, I'm still alive. Thank you, Lord. Pinagsisihan ko po yun. Life is beautiful. And doon ko na-realize that no matter what trials will come our way, life is still beautiful. Napakarami pong ginagawang mabubuti ng Diyos sa ating buhay. God is so good. Marami pa po siyang ipapagawa sa atin. Huwag po nating isipin na wakasan ang ating mga buhay. Trials will keep coming, different sizes, different form, but by the grace of God, we can overcome. Alam niyo po, when we are weak, God is strong. Sabi po sa 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, And He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Alam niyo po si Paul na nagsulat nito had physical illness na sabi niya three times I plead the Lord to remove these infirmities from my body. Hindi po sinabi ko anong klaseng sakit yon pero maaari po sobrang sakit kasi si Apostol Pablo, ilang beses na shipwreck, tatlo if I remember correctly, natuklaw ng ahas but they are all nothing sa mga pain na yan. Pero itong sakit niya, sinabi niya, pinagpray niya, Lord, tanggalin mo itong sakit kong ito pero hindi tinanggal ng Diyos. Alam niyo po, nag-surrender si Paul sa kanya at sinabi niya, Okay, Lord, I will boast the more gladly because in my weakness, your power will rest upon me. Hindi po lahat ng hinihiling natin, tinutugo ng Diyos ng yes. Mayroong mga weights and mayroong mga nos. Pag sinabi po ng Diyos na wait, dito po natetest ang ating patience. Dito yung panahon na gumagawa tayo ng sarili nating kaparaanan. And if God says no, dito tayo gumagawa ng sarili nating paraan. Sarili nating yes because gusto nating magawa or matupad yung nais natin. 
But mga kapatid, when God says wait, let us wait. When God says no, say yes, Lord, I surrender. Now, going back to Google's answer, yes, it is true. But one thing that we can hold on to, mga kapatid, that whenever we face trials of many kinds, every trial that we overcome are like the test that we pass. And when we pass the test, we will be rewarded. Second point po is, the furnace of trials produces perseverance or patience. Ano po ba yung perseverance sa Tagalog? According po sa aking pag-aaral, hinanap ko pa talaga, perseverance is pagpupunyagi, pagsusumikap, pagtsatsaga. If we will run for at least two hours a day, we will definitely lose weight. You agree? I do also, hindi ko lang ginagawa. Bakit po? Kasi mahirap, di ba? And there are times na ayaw nating nahihirapan. Ayaw natin ng sacrifice. But we know that every time na tayo ay magsusumikap, sigurado mga kapatid, may magandang bunga. Athletes go through a series of trainings to win competitions. Training po sila. Hindi ko na i-explain. Alam ko, karamihan sa atin, alam natin ang ginagawa ni Manny Pacquiao because he is a very good example of an athlete na kung siya ay magte-training, talagang ibinubuhos niya ang kanyang katawan, ang kanyang lakas sa kanyang pagte-training. And mga estudyante, kapag sila po ay may exam, nag-aaral silang mabuti. Ewan ko lang sa inyo ha. Baka kayo hindi kayo nag-aaral mabuti nung nag-aaral kayo. Pero karamihan po sa mga estudyante na ang goal ay to be in the next level, sila po ay nagsusumikap, nag-aaral ng mabuti. At sa atin ding mga empleyado, kapag gusto nating maka-achieve ng promotion, ibinubuhos natin yung ating buhay sa ating trabaho. I remember, alam niyo po, nung medyo kabataan ko pa, talagang ibinuhos ko ang lakas ko sa aking trabaho because I want to get promoted. I want to prove na kaya ko because of God's grace, not because of my own mga kapatid. And because of that goal, somehow hindi rin siya, I know in my, I, I, I believe that all things work together for good. Nakatulong po siya ng malaki sa amin. But ang nakita ko po doon, God will allow you to experience what you desire to teach you lessons. Yun po yung mga panahon na natutulog ako ng alauna ng madaling araw, gigising ng alas 5, magtatrabaho uli, because I want to reach a certain goal. Ganon po tayo, kapag mayroon tayong pagtsatsaga, sigurado may reward tayo. Mga kapatid, in Christian life, when we are tested and we pass the test, we also got promoted. Our faith increases and this enables us to choose joy in the midst of trials. Third point po is the furnace of trials result in our greatest joy, namely conformity to Christ. Ang sabi po ng John 16.33 sa mga nagpe-prayer meeting, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Mga kapatid, Jesus Christ overcame death, sufferings, sickness, addiction, poverty, betrayal, bondages, or anything that hurts, devastates, and worries us, or that kills our joy. Napagtagumpayan na yan ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. And ang sabi niya, be of good cheer. In other translation, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. What's in this world? Nasabi ko na po lahat ng iba't ibang klase ng pain and suffering. You can think for more. But one thing for sure, Jesus Christ has overcome that. Ano ang kailangan nating gawin? Just trust Him. Trust Jesus. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This promise in John chapter 16, 33 is conditional, mga kapatid. We will have peace and joy if we are in His presence. How can we have joy if we are not in God's presence? 
Nandun tayo sa mundo. May problema tayong pinagdadaanan, nagiinom tayo, naglalasing tayo. Nandun tayo sa ibang bahagi ng mundo. How can we have joy? Mga kapatid, yung iba sinasabi nila, pag uminom sila ng alak, mawawala yung kanilang problema. And what after that? Paggising, mas higit na problema. Gumastos na, sumakit na ang ulo, masakit ang pakiramdam, nawala ba yung problema? Hindi naman. But when we are in the presence of God, there is joy and there is peace. Number three, mga kapatid, trials can promote us. We talk about testings, and whenever we pass the test, tayo ay nag increase Therefore, trials can promote us. Do you want to be promoted? Ang ina ng amen nyo. Do you want to be promoted? Yes, in all aspects of our lives, especially in our faith. We want our faith to increase. Ang sabi po ng James chapter 1, verse 12, sabi po niya, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because, why? Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Do you love Him? Mga kapatid, this is a promise. We will receive the crown of life. The fact that endurance must do its complete work, yung praise po na sinabi doon, helps us see that God will finish His work. Sabi po ng Philippians 1.6, He who began a good work in you shall bring it to completion until the day of Christ. Marami pong ginagawang mabubuting bagay ang Diyos sa ating buhay. And He Himself will complete it because of His grace because we cannot do it on our own strength. Wala pong isa man sa atin dito mga kapatid ang makapagsasabi na itong bagay na ito ay na-accomplish ko or nagawa ko sa pamamagitan ng sarili kong lakas. Everything comes from God. Our response to trials matters, mga kapatid. Our joy, sabi po sa verse 2, our cooperation sa verse 4, is important as we respond to our suffering and trials. Ilang beses na po nating narinig, positive or right perspective really matters. Do you agree? Because it is how we look at the events of our lives. Ko ano yung pagtingin natin, nagiging ganun siya. Kung iniisip natin ang ating sitwasyon ay walang pag-asa, wala talaga siyang pag-asa. Kung tinitingnan natin ang ating sitwasyon ay mabakabuti para sa atin, makakabuti ito para sa atin mga kapatid. It is how we respond to events and circumstances in our lives. I began this sermon or message with the story of the annoyingly positive servant. To illustrate what this means, what positivity or right perspective means. Mga kapatid, in our everyday lives, nakikita yung ating perspective. Tama ba ito or mali? Sa ating trabaho, di ba kapag inuutusan tayo ng amo natin tapos may ginagawa pa tayo, naiinis tayo. May ginagawa pa nga ako, utos ng utos. Kala siguro nito wala akong ginagawa. Kung may nakitang mali sa ginagawa natin at nasita tayo, di ba naiirata tayo? Sa halip na ipagpasalamat natin that we would have something to learn from that mistake, the normal reaction of human is to get mad or mainis or mairita. It is because of pride. Because iniisip natin or hindi man natin iniisip, meron tayong, uh, in, na higit tayo kaysa sa kanila. And one of the most difficult thing to do, mga kapatid, is to discern the error of our hearts. Hindi natin nakikita ang error ng ating mga puso kadalasan. Now, in the events of trials, how do we respond? Nakakalungkot pong isipin, may mga kapatid tayo na wawala na sa church. This is reality. May mga bago po tayong kasama. 
mga kapatid. Um, this is reality. It happens. And this is life. May mga kapatid po nawawala sa church dahil sa iba't ibang kadahilanan. Yung iba na offend tapos hindi na babalik. Mga kapatid, when we go to church, we meet with co-believers, we worship the Lord with them, we listen to the word of God with them, but we did not come for them. We come to church for the Lord. They are not the reason why we come. Not our brothers, not our sisters. It is mainly the Lord. Si Lord ang ating sadya. Ang iba po na yung Istanbul, may nakikita sila na ayaw nila. Kasano ba to? Ba't ganitong pag-uugali nito? Ba't ganito magsalita ito? Bakit ganito tong mga to pataas-taas ng kamay? Mga kapatid, It happens because sa tao tayo nakatingin, hindi kay Lord. Subukan natin kay Lord tumingin. Wala tayong makikitang pangit, puro magaganda, kasi perfect siya. Ang iba naman po, nadaanan ng bagyo, dumaan sa pagsubok, pero sa halip na kumapit kay Lord, sumama sa bagyo, nagpatangay sa anod. The book of Luke, Mark, and Matthew record this event. But we will read from the book of Mark as I end because I like the way Mark put them in details. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 31. Ito po yung event na ang Panginoong Yesus ay natutulog sa bangka. Verse 35, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind them They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Furious, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and sent to the waves. Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Mga kapatid, Jesus slept in the middle of storm with cushion. Do you know what it means to sleep on cushion? Di ba sobrang peaceful? Di ba sobrang masarap matulog sa unan? Jesus did not even bother because He knows His power. He knew that nothing will happen to them. He is all-powerful. He rebuked His disciples and calmed the storm. Now the question is this, do you know that Jesus is with you? Jesus says, Why are you so afraid? This strikes me. Jesus is saying, don't be afraid. I am with you. He can calm the storm. Mga kapatid, our response matters. And we can choose joy because we know that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. If our response to trial is to persevere, we will be promoted. The choice is ours. Our response reveals our heart. Sabi po ng James 1:58, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Here James, mga kapatid, says, is, eh, If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God. Kung nangangailangan tayo ng karunungan, ask God. He is talking about the wisdom on how to deal with on the previous verse. 
Ang sabi po ng previous verse, consider it pure joy, mga kapatid, when you face trials of many kinds. And how can we consider trials as pure joy? We need wisdom how to overcome these trials. In school, the more we, stud we study and the more we review, the more we become knowledgeable. Actually, it applies to everything, maging sa work. This means the more we pass the test, the, the more we move to the next level. In our Christian walk, the more we listen and study the Word of God, the more our faith increases. The book of Romans says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. The more faith increase, our faith increases, the more we will pass the test. And mga kapatid, how can our faith be increased if we don't listen to the word of God? That is why I encourage every one of us, keep listening, keep attending the church, keep listening to preachings, keep attending prayer meetings. This will increase your faith. Most of you here, kilala na po namin ni Pastor, if not all of you. But of course, God knows you better than us. And somehow, hindi man po perfectly, we know how you guys deal with trials in your life. Somehow naaamoy namin kahit papaano. And to most of you, I am personally blessed. With this matter's permission, I want to share something as I end po about our conversation the other day. Uh, this week, his brother was tested positive of COVID-19. To be honest po, nag-worry ako para kay si Smara and for Kim, yung kanyang brother. Because I know that si Smara loves uh, his brother so much. Kasi nag-iisang kapatid, dalawa lamang po silang magkapatid. I know how she cares for him. When I texted her, I was so blessed sa positivity ng kanyang pananaw sa sitwasyon. Instead na i-meditate niya yung possibility na ang kanyang buong family, ang kanyang mother, ang kanyang hipag, ang kanyang pamangkin na baby ay mahawa ng COVID-19, ang nakita po niya yung good thing na nangyayari. Ang sabi niya, may mga kamag-anak sila na nagdadala ng mga pangangailangan ng kanyang family. Such a blessing to have those kind of relatives. And this is what she looks at. She look at. Yung tiningnan niya po yung kagandahan ng nangyari. And they decided as family na sa pension house daw po i-quarantine yung kanyang brother para po sa kanyang comfortability. Para mas komportable siya. Ayaw niya kasi ng close, ayaw niya ng masikip. So mas komportable siya doon. Then after two days, nag-message po siya sa prayer group requesting for prayer Dahil nag-positive na yung kanyang mama, kanyang hipag at kanyang pamangkin. I was a bit worried again, so I prayed and I texted her to check kung kumusta siya. I was in the office, kaya medyo pigil po yung aking pagluha. But... I was so blessed sa kanyang sagot. Ang sabi po niya, God is good always, pastora. Pinauwi na si Kim at sa bahay na magkasama sila, mag-quarantine po sila until 10th. Kahapon okay naman po sila, wala na pong lagnat and flu na lang. Active naman si baby at magana. Nagpositive ang kanyang buong family na nasa Pilipinas. Brother, mother, sister-in-law. And baby. <clears throat> but what she sees ay yung mabuti doon sa nangyari. Sabi niya ngayon magkakasama na sila sa bahay. Of course, di ba? Maganda. Kaya ako ay napaluha knowing na magkakasama na sila at wala naman silang worrisome na symptoms pati si baby. And this is what she said also. We are thankful that the Lord did not allow for them to be separated, especially si Kino, yung baby po. Same lang ang result, because if may nag-negative, mahihirapan po sila mag-alaga sa bata. Even it is a positive result, the Lord is gracious to our family po. Wow. Sabi ko, Lord, this is faith. 
faith in action. And this is what I desire for all of us to be developed. As believers of Christ, hindi po tayo excuse sa trial, sa testing of faith. But through these trials, we are being strengthened. God is proving His faithfulness. He restores. Mga kapatid, everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by chance or by means of luck. Illness, injury, love, loss of things we value, people, friends, all occur to test the limits of our soul. Without this small test, whatever they may be, life would be like a smoothly paved, straight, flat road to nowhere. It would be safe and comfortable, but dull and utterly pointless. The people we meet, the people we meet who affect our life and the success and downfalls we experience help to create who we become. Even the bad experience can be learned from. In fact, They are probably the most touching and important ones. If someone hurts you, betrays you, or break your heart, forgive them. For they have helped you learn about trust and the importance of being cautious when you open your heart. If someone loves you, love them back unconditionally. Not only because they love you, but because in a way they are teaching you to love and how to open your heart and eyes to things. Mga kapatid, if we consider the obstacles of life to be opportunities that mature our faith and produce in us patience, endurance, we will come to understand that God is using the trials of life to benefit our Christian character as we grow more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So when troubles come our way, let us consider it an opportunity for great joy, knowing that when our faith is tested, our patient endurance has a chance to grow and our life will glorify our Father in heaven. And as C.S. Lewis said, life with God is not immunity from difficulties, but peace in difficulties. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for your message today. It is my prayer, O God, that through this message, our faith will be increased. We will be strengthened spiritually, O God. And dumating man ang mga pagsubok sa aming mga buhay, hindi po kami bibitaw sapagkat alam namin kasama ka namin. Lord, today, we choose joy in the midst of trials. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you.